Hi, and welcome. OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT, has recently rolled out an amazing new feature called Custom GPTs, with which you can create your own version of ChatGPT. And the best part is that you can train it on your own data and with your own set of instructions. This is a game changer. Imagine what all you can do with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own custom GPT step by step from start to finish. Also, I will lay out the use cases on how you can use custom GPTs in your business and personal life. My goal with this video is to help you understand what GPTs are, where to use them and how to build them. OK, let's get started. So in layman terms, what is GPT? GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. I know it's a lot of jargon. A, a GPT is like a really smart computer program that's great at using words. Imagine it as a helpful assistant that can write letters, answer questions, or even make up stories just by understanding what you're asking for. It has gained all this knowledge by reading a lot of books and articles, so it knows a lot of different things. You can ask it anything from, let's say, recipes to advice, and it'll come up with a response that sounds as if it were written by a person. So it's like having a very, very super knowledgeable friend on your computer who always is there to help you out with words as well as ideas. Now, the next question is, where can you use these custom GPTs? So there are numerous ways you can use GPTs in your business or in your personal life. Let me share some ideas with you. All right, so here are some use cases where you can use GPTs for business. The first one is customer service automation. You know, this is pretty big where you can use GPTs for improving customer service by answering FAQs and resolving simple issues. And you can save a lot of time. Another one is content creation and management. Uh, third one is business analytics and insights where you can use GPTs to actually analyze data and kind of decipher, you know, it can give you recommendations uh, and help you in decision making. Another one is email communication, where you can streamline business communication by automating uh, emails and uh, reporting, okay? Uh, then again, you can use GPTs for translation, for uh, personalized marketing. It can create a personalized marketing and sales assistant plan for you. And uh, then it can do trainings for you as well. This is pretty big. Again, you can actually load in documents, your personal documents, uh, uh, into GPT and then can train any new hires and everything. It can automatically train uh, using that GPT. Uh, there's another one called idea generation and innovation where you can actually use GPTs. Uh, it can really help you brainstorm ideas. So these are some really, really good, uh, you know, use cases for GPT. Obviously, there's just the tip of the iceberg. So in personal case, uh, you can use GPTs for daily planning and organization where you can actually create to-do lists and schedules uh, with the help of GPT. All right. Uh, then it, another one is learning and education where you can do research, personalized fitness and diet plans. Now, this is pretty big, actually, because you, it, GPT uh, can, let's say if you have a chef GPT, it can tell you uh, a very tailor-made uh, fitness plan sort of thing uh, for eating and everything. And then again, you can actually have a GPT which can tell you uh, how to exercise or things like that. Uh, as I already said, recipe generation and meal planning, you can use that GPT for that. Uh, another great use case is travel planning. If you're going to any city, uh, let's say you're going to India or Bali or Japan or wherever it is, it can give you recommendations on um, you know how to plan a day by day recommendation. It can totally make an itinerary for you because it has all that data. So um, and creative writing is another field. Personal finance management is another one, big one because you can ask GPT and get advice on budgeting, on savings, etc. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. As you can see, it has some amazing use cases. Okay. So now uh, the next thing is, let me show you how to build one, how to build a GPT. Okay, so first things first. So in order to use GPTs, you need to have a ChatGPT premium account, okay? So let's go to ChatGPT and uh, let's go to Google, ChatGPT. And so if you already have an account, amazing, then just log in. But if you don't, uh, just sign up. Sign up is really, really quick. Okay, so then just click on Google. Uh, you can use actually your email as well, but uh, or just you know, if in case you have a Google account, then you can sign in by Google. So I'm just going to use this and create an account. All right, perfect. So there you go, and I have an account now. Let's go away. So just say okay, let's go. And this is ChatGPT. So uh, this is a regular, this is a basic free account. But as I said before, in order to use GPTs, you need to have a premium account, a ChatGPT premium account. So you can either upgrade from just going to this place and GPT-4 saying upgrade to plus, uh, or you can also go from here. Great. Okay, and the same window opens up. 
So right now there is a wait list on signups, but uh, I already have a premium account. So I'm going to show you exactly how to create a GPT, but this is how you upgrade. Okay. All right, great. So now we are in ChatGPT Premium. You can see on the left-hand side, this is ChatGPT 4, okay? If you have a free version, uh, it would be ChatGPT 3.5. Uh, when you upgrade to Premium, then it actually automatically comes to ChatGPT 4 as a default uh, model. Okay, so now if you see on the left-hand side, I have something on Explore, and this is where you can create your GPT. So my GPT is the where my GPTs is where you'll actually create a custom GPT, okay? We'll get to that. And these are some of the pre-made GPTs by OpenAI. So if you have, uh, let's say, Dali. Dali is one which actually helps you create images. Then these guys have created a GPT, which is a creative writing coach, which can actually help you with, if you're writing a book or anything creative, any creative writing, it can actually help you with that. I've not explored all of these, but uh, they look pretty promising. They're, they look pretty exciting. Okay, so now let's create our own personal GPT. Okay, so to create a GPT, custom GPT, just click on the plus button and it comes to the GPT builder. On a side note, I hope you're getting some value out of this video. And if you are, please click the like button. Also on this channel, I'll be creating a lot more videos on using AI for automation. My next video will be on how to use Zapier and custom GPTs so you can automate business processes seamlessly. So if you're interested in learning about AI automation, hit the subscribe button now so you never miss out when I post a new video. Also, if you have any AI automation project that you would like us to help you with, do check out my AI automation agency. I'll drop a link in the description. Okay, back to the video. So now you're in the GPT builder, okay? And this is where you can actually create any GPT for you. So for the purpose of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a GPT which actually helps you with email outreach, okay? Especially cold email outreach because that's a hard part for most of the businesses. All right, so the GPT, what I wanted to do is, it, I wanted to actually answer questions such as like, what is the best uh, subject line when you are doing a cold email outreach or how should you actually format an email, you know, so that it gets maximum conversion, all right? So let's build that. Basically, you can create a GPT for anything, but the thing is that again, it's much better if in case you actually have a GPT, which is sort of like more focused towards a niche rather than actually just saying that, let's create a GPT for the whole of marketing. Uh, where it has emails and can give you advice on everything, it's much better to actually have a GPT which is sort of focused, let's say on emails and then maybe on ads, Facebook ads if you want to do one, or maybe a Google ads or SEO, things like that. So as I said, so for this video, I'm going to create a, a cold email outreach uh, GPT, okay? So let's say, so what would you like to make? I want to create a GPT that could help me with Cold email outreach. All right, so let's see what it's up. And so you can see that's updating the GPT. Now it's actually gathering and creating your GPT at this point of time. As this is building the GPT on the left-hand side, you'll see a preview, which is I'll start creating. So how should I start my cold emails? So it has already got the questions in, okay? So, all right, so now it's saying, uh, great, we are making a GPT to help you with cold email outreach. Now let's give it a name. So I'm gonna call it something like cold email maven. All right, so now it's creating, it's already, now it has a name and I'm sure it's gonna update it out here. So it's generating profile picture. So Dali is basically from OpenAI and it generates an image, okay? So right now it's creating an image for you as well. Uh, so here's a profile picture of the cold email maven. Do you like it or would you like to make any changes? I don't like it that much. So I'm gonna say uh, make a new one. All right, so let's see what it comes up with now. All right, so it's generated a new one. It says this is a new profile picture for your cold email maven. How do you feel about this one? Uh, I'm actually okay with that. So I'm gonna say it's this is fine. All right, and let's go ahead. We can always change the picture at a later time. Even if you don't like it, uh, you can always change it later. So now it's saying, okay, great. Now let's focus on refining the content of the cold email maven. Is there a particular tone or style you would like to use when helping with cold email outreach? For example, should it lean more towards formal, corporate style, or more towards casual and friendly? So I prefer casual and friendly, so I'm gonna say that. Uh, more casual and friendly because, you know, when you're doing an outreach, we don't want to sound very stuck up or very corporate-like. Basically, it should be a little relaxed and sort of like more fun. Okay, so let's go with this and let's see. So now what you're trying to behave, so now you're trying to define, so now what you're trying to do is define the behavior 
and how the GPT is going to respond. You know, so whenever you ask a question, it is going to respond in a manner which is sort of friendly and uh, casual rather than being uptight or corporate. Finally, how would you like cold email maven to interact with you? Should be more like a collaborative partner offering suggestions or more directive providing clear instructions and examples. So I would prefer something which is providing me clear instructions and examples rather than probing me basically because when I want to ask a question, I want an answer as to what is to be done or how should I do it. So, you know, it totally depends on your style. You can create two, which is one is collaborative and the other is <clears throat> providing clear instructions, but I'm going to go with this one right now. All right, so now the cold email maven is now set up and ready to provide in clear instructions, okay? So now it's all set up. This is your GPT, this is ready, and you can actually start querying it right away. Uh, okay, on the left-hand side, if you see the save menu on the top, you have, it publishes only to you. So if in case you just want to use it for yourself, that's fine, only to people with the link. So you can actually publish this and send a link to people or you make it public, okay? So I'm just gonna, for now, basically, I'm just gonna say it to, for only me, and I'll say confirm, all right, and that's it. All right, and that's how you actually do a calling me Maven. It's right here. So this is your GPT, which was on the side. All right. So this is exactly like chat GPT, but this is totally focused on cold emails. Okay, what is the best subject line for maximum conversion? And let's ask this one. Okay, so it's actually giving you what are the best line for maximum conversion and it's telling you. So this is, there are some examples. Sharing sources or quick question on topic, project, product name. So this is all very helpful. All right, so there's one more thing actually. So this is your GPT which has been created, okay? So this is, you've already created the GPT. Now you can actually edit that as well. So let's say for example, you have this GPT which is getting all this data from its knowledge base, but you want to use your own knowledge base as well, okay? So in this case, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say edit this GPT, and it takes me to the editor, back to the editor. So the GPT is already ready, and then you can go to configure. In configure, you can see that there's a cold email maven, there's a name, you can actually change the name also. So let's, let me call it just email maven rather than cold email maven, okay? So, and you, this is updated in real time, all right? and. Uh, then of course, this is the prompt, and these are the instructions, which you can change. So you can change the instructions, you can change the description also. I assist with crafting effective cold emails for various industries. You can make it specific to a particular industry, and then you can change the instructions out here. Also, the, there's one more very, very good feature which this has is that you can actually give it your own document. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna upload two, uh, two documents uh, on cold emails, and then let's see how it works. <clears throat> So it's called cold email hacks. Let me just open it real quick for you. And this is cold email hacks. This is a this is a PDF, which is uh, provided by, this is a free PDF by close.io. So I'm uploading this one, uh, which actually provides you with a lot of data on how to format cold emails and all those things. So I'm gonna upload this data so that this GPT can reference this particular file as well, uh, you know. And uh, let me just add another one which is called Sumo. This, so basically, this is again a free resource from Sumo uh, and it is a cold email templates. So I want this GPT to actually reference this as well, okay? So I'm gonna upload this. Okay, perfect. So now this is uploaded. And uh, so there are some capabilities and so now it's web browsing. So what this means is that you want the GPT to actually just not reference these two documents, but go to Google as well and find details, okay? Dali image generation, so yes, we'd want whatever you want. If you want the images, that's fine. In cold email templates, I don't think so. I want this, so I'm just gonna shut it off. And then there's something called code interpreter, basically, okay? Which actually lets you run code. So in this case, I don't want to do that. I don't think so, that's important for me. So I'm gonna just close this as well, all right? And that's it. Um, and in additional settings, let's see, use conversation data in your GPT to improve your models, all right? So just keep it checked, basically what it means is that all the conversation which you're having with GPT, the GPT is going to use that to train the models as well, which is fine, so just keep it checked, okay? So now, uh, 
there's something called actions. Uh, so actions is something which uh, you can create custom actions, such as uh, if you want to do an API call. So this is a little advanced for uh, for this particular tutorial. And you know, if in case you want to learn about this thing, I'm going to probably do another tutorial for actions itself, like where we can create custom actions and everything in another video. But for the sake of this thing, because uh, this is generally the GPT right now, which we've created is to query the knowledge database. Okay, but if you wanted to do actions, uh, such as go uh, use an API and get some data, that is where you define actions. And that's where you actually define uh, in actions, okay? So uh, where you can actually put in your code out here. Uh, anyways, for this particular tutorial, this is a little advanced, so I'm not gonna use that. And now, as I said, uh, our GPT is ready to get updated. And uh, also one more thing. So as you can see, this conversation starters, you can actually customize these as well. So this is exactly what comes out here, the four ones. But if you don't like this particular one, and if you wanna add your own, you can do that and it will start showing up here. All right, so just update that. Okay, so now it's updated. Uh, let's view GPT and it goes back to the same place. What are the guidelines for email subject? subject line okay so as you can see this is uh, pretty helpful you know you can actually ask it questions and uh, what are the quality of subject lines what are the guidelines so it can actually tell you all these things and now it is referencing uh, the internet as well as your documents to get and generate these answers okay this is how we create a GPT so you can create a GPT for anything it can be but like the way I create for cold emails, you can do it for Google ads or Facebook ads or anything in marketing, or maybe I'm mean, like, you know, for totally a different topic altogether. All right. All right. Custom GPTs are awesome. But what if you can give them superpowers? My next two videos will be on how to add custom GPTs to your own website and how to integrate Zapier with custom GPTs to automate tasks. So if you'd like to learn about that, do remember to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you have a question or you would want me to create a video on any AI automation topic, add them in the comments below. If there is enough interest, I'll definitely make it. Also, all the links are in the description. Now, if you want to learn more about how to extract emails from Google Maps listings, click on this video, or you can see another video from Flipbytes by clicking or tapping the screen. I can't wait to see in future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.